So 2016's been a very interesting year when it comes to comic book movies. We got two movies in the X-Men universe, we got two movies in the DC universe, and we got two movies in the Marvel universe. So let's spend some time talking about them. So 2016 might have given us the most divisive batch of comic book movies we've ever received. The expectations were so high. Some of these movies were so weird. And the results were kind of all over the place. So here is my rank of all six major comic book movies of the year 2016. Before I rank these, let me state that this is my very subjective ranking. This is not me trying to give an objective ranking of what I think is cinematic level. No, no, this is just purely personal. The level of enjoyment that I got out of these movies, the likelihood I will watch it again, and some of that is based off of the craftsmanship of it, and some of it is just did it deliver enough stuff that stirred my emotions, that made me go, I want to watch that again. I enjoyed that. And so some of the movies I rank high up have big, gigantic problems, where some of the ones that are lower don't have necessarily big problems. They're just not movies that interested me all that much. So with that said, this is my very subjective ranking of the comic book movies of 2016. So coming at number six for me is X. X-Men Apocalypse. So of the modern era of comic book movies, this is the longest running franchise and for me, it's kind of been running out of steam. I thought that X-Men First Class was the last movie in the franchise that really kind of wowed me and surprised me. Days of Future Past was really good, but I kind of had higher expectations because of all the stuff they were doing. And then this movie was just kind of like okay, more X-Men stuff happened. As has been stated by many people before, Jennifer Lawrence just feels like she didn't want to do the movie and just kind of phoning it in. Apocalypse was not nearly as strong of a villain as we've come to expect from this franchise. Really, the only stuff in the... Or really, the only one scene in the movie that popped to me was the scene with Magneto with his family. And if you've seen the movie, you know which one I'm talking about in the forest. And that scene's incredible. And the rest of the movie is, is just not... It felt a little bit like it, it, the tone was kind of all over the place, and it was surprisingly violent for an X-Men movie. Like, they're trying to push boundaries that they haven't tried to push before, maybe because of Deadpool. I mean, I don't know, but it seemed awfully violent for this franchise. And just overall, a forgettable movie. It, it, if I'm going to watch an X-Men movie... This one is so far down the list of ones I would want to watch. And it's not even so much that there are big, gigantic problems or holes in the movie, whereas some of the movies I ranked higher this year obviously have some gigantic holes in them. This movie just had nothing interesting going on. Like, they tried to have into the world stakes, but it just felt like generic comic booky movie type stuff where there's clouds of garbage over a city spinning around, there's blown up buildings, and all the big gigantic things that happen have no weight to them because it's just handled on such a gigantic level. Nothing personal where you feel the loss, like the one scene in the forest, which is so emotional and powerful, and then you get to the finale of this movie, and it's just kind of like, okay, stuff's happening. And it, it just didn't work for me. It wasn't memorable. It's not one that I care to watch again. If I want to watch the first class stuff, then I'll watch first class. If I want to watch just like a solid X-Men movie, I'll watch X-Men 2. And when it comes to this franchise, I just really feel they've run out of steam. Coming in at number five is Suicide Squad. While I thoroughly enjoyed watching this movie... It is a mess from concept to the writing to the editing. It is all over the place. It's saved by the fact that the cast and the characters are so much fun to be around that you just sit there thinking to yourself, I wish that these characters and these actors were in a much better Suicide Squad movie. So the rumor mill says that David Ayer only had six weeks to write the script for this movie, which it feels like that. And then they say that there were reshoots after Batman v Superman to add more humor into it, which which it feels like that. And then as they started getting closer and the studios felt that the trailers were stronger than the movie, the rumor is that they had the trailer people come in and do another cut of the movie to add more of the trailer vibe into the movie, which the movie feels like that. And you just kind of go through it and you go, it, it, there are these bizarre decisions that are made where there's like, like a greatest hits of classic rock soundtrack for the first 30 minutes and then that ends for an hour and then the last 20 minutes has that again. Stuff where it just feels like someone came in and fiddled with it for a little bit, but the main plot of this movie is, is a terrible plot for this group of characters. It gets to the cliche thing of a beam in the sky and garbage flying all around. The enemies are just an, a mindless army of people that you don't care about. It's just so bizarre that they picked such great characters, got such great actors, got a very talented writer-director, 
And then they shackled him by only giving him six weeks to write the script and then meddling with things afterwards. You just wish that he'd been given the time to make a good movie out of this because it's almost a really good movie, even though it's a terrible movie at the same time. Coming in at number four for me is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. This movie for a lot of people is one of the most disappointing movies of all time, and for good reason. There were so many elements here that could have made for a truly classic comic book film. One of the greats of all time by bringing Batman and Superman together in a movie facing off against Lex Luthor in the aftermath of what happened in Man of Steel. It was set up to be so good and it's just not. Now, to be clear, I still think this is a good movie. It's just a mess of a movie. Much like Suicide Squad, you can just feel that there were too many cooks in the kitchen fiddling around with it. From the best I can tell, the way it came together is that originally this was supposed to be Man of Steel 2. And you can look at the plot of the movie where you could remove Batman from it, and the plot of it surrounds Lex Luthor battling against Superman, trying to do a PR campaign against him, and then at the end, the final battles against Doomsday, and Superman dies. You you could see where that was a plot to a movie without Batman in it, and then they added Batman into it. And they did a pretty good job of that. But then you can also see where they were going through the process and they're like, let's make this Dawn of Justice. And so then they start adding even more pieces into it and it just gets so bloated, overstuffed with things that they didn't have any one of these stories that was pulled off to the best of its ability. So you kind of have a decent story in there about Superman wondering if he should be Superman, except it's not as compelling as it should be because you never get to see a joyful Superman happy about saving people. You just see him glum and sad like frowning as he's saving people's lives. And so they didn't get to put in the positive elements in there to have an actual tension within Superman. You just have him unhappy about being a hero. You have Batman in the story, but you only get to see angry Batman that's cynical that does, until like the last 10 minutes of the movie after everything's gone bad. And so you don't get to see a fully rounded Batman in his fall to this angry, cynical guy that feels he has to stop Superman because so many plot lines were in there. And then in addition to that, you stuff in Wonder Woman and you stuff in cameos of The Flash and Cyborg. And the end result is of just a big, gigantic mess. But like I said, the elements in this movie that work, I think really work well. There's some great Batman sequences in this especially if you can get past the fact that Batman kills people. And I, if you can't, I will not hold you at any fault. Totally get it. I don't like that he kills people either. But the actual action sequences themselves are handled very well, and they're very interesting and cool to look at. The final battle with Doomsday, I think, is a well-shot sequence. You can actually tell what's going on. It's interesting. You see Wonder Woman doing things. Each person has a character. As Batman is just kind of zipping around trying to not die and shoot some kryptonite over there. It's a well-structured sequence. There's a lot of things in here that I think are enjoyable, but as a whole, it doesn't come together very well. I totally understand why a lot of people were disappointed, why a lot of people hate this movie, why a lot of people think that Zack Snyder should never direct another Superman movie ever again because he does not understand Superman, why they shouldn't trust him with any franchise ever again because he took on Superman, though it seems like he kind of hates Superman. I get all of that. For me... I could rewatch this movie a lot. Probably of all the movies on this list, this is the one I could probably rewatch the most, which might sound weird to you in light of everything I'm saying, but because I love Superman, because I love Batman, and I think there's enough elements in here that are interesting to me, this is the one I'm probably going to, well, I have up to this point rewatched the most, and that'll probably continue to be true into the future. As we move into my top three, these are all really, really good movies that on a different day, I could rank these totally different. But here we go. Coming in at number three for me is Deadpool. For a lot of people, this is going to be their number one, their number two pick. For me, the nature of the humor of it has a certain first time novelty value to it. So the first time you see kind of the opening credits, so funny because it's so different and interesting. All the times there's that meta humor where he's talking or breaking the fourth wall. The first time you experience that, it's really funny. And then there's kind of a certain level of diminishing returns on it. Likewise, there's a certain simplicity to the story that doesn't make it necessarily super compelling to me moving forward. He's not the most heroic of people that it kind of stirs my emotions besides fun and laughter. And so it's just not as strong, but I totally get why a lot of people have it ranked up higher. Also, I'm a Christian on the modest side of things, so this isn't the type of movie I watch a whole lot of. But if I'm being honest, I, I laughed a lot. I had so much fun. I love that movies that break the fourth wall that are so weird like this was so successful. That it's sending a message to Hollywood, stop 
falling into this template mindset that you have to have a $200 million budget to make money. No, there's an audience for weird commodities like this. This is a hard R, like for non-comic book, like hardcore comic book fans, Deadpool wasn't a brand name that everybody knew until this movie came out. Ryan Reynolds was is an A-list star, but he hasn't been like just like cranking out blockbusters using his name to like for a while. Like he's never done that. This movie was successful because this movie was really good and scratched an itch that existed. And so I'm so happy that this movie was successful. While it might not be exactly my cup of tea, uh, not one that I'll rewatch a lot, but. I'm so happy it was successful and that movies like this are actually getting made and hopefully this will make Hollywood realize they can take some risks and they need to make more movies with budgets like this because they can be big, gigantic hits. Coming in at number two is Doctor Strange. It might be the 14th movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but they are showing no signs of slowing down or losing any of their quality. This is a very enjoyable film. It's a very unique film. Now, to be honest, there's a certain sameness to the formula of it, of the use of humor in it, of the structure of the origin story, but I think the sameness is made up for by the uniqueness of the weird character, of the visuals, of the new direction they took the storytelling, of the time travel type stuff. There's a lot of things in here that are new, fresh, unique, and so I can forgive the sameness in the structure of the story. This was a great time at the movies. I really enjoyed it. My wife really enjoyed it. Neither one of us knew anything about Doctor Strange, and so I'm very happy that this movie's doing great at the box office. This was a solid, solid movie. I want to watch again as soon as I can. And coming in at number one is Captain America Civil War. Once again, the MCU and Kevin Feige and his whole team of people have crafted an excellent excellent comic book movie, which kind of provides our dream come true as our favorite Marvel characters face off against one another. And it wasn't just kind of like just this forced story. It made sense. As I talked about in my ranking of all 14 MCU movies, what made this really work is that you really had two competing ideologies that made sense. You had Captain America, who had a strong, noble character in and of himself, in a world where he did not trust governments because they were not trustworthy. And then you had a Tony Stark who did not have strong inner moral character and self-control who did not trust himself. Therefore, he needed outside government to pull rein him in. That's two very reasonable positions. And that's what makes this movie work is you can see where both of them are coming from, why both of them are right and why both of them are wrong and where they're coming from and why different people would side with them. So once again, this is a very enjoyable movie. Really, the only thing I have against this movie is there's a certain sense of familiarity to it because we've seen Avengers face off against each other in Avengers 1 and then again in Avengers 2. And so seeing more of that even on a bigger scale with a better story to it, is more of something we've seen before. You know, we've seen Iron Man like six times before this. We've seen all these characters, other than a couple new ones, many times before. And so there's a certain sense of been there, done that. But that's my only complaint. This is a very fun time. I'll watch it many times again. There's a good reason that in a year where we got six different comic book movies that this is number one. They crafted a great, great movie, and it's the third Captain America movie, and it's the best of the Captain America movies. It's the third movie kind of in the Avengers, well, it's not really the third Avengers movie, but it is kind of the third Avengers movie, and I wouldn't say it's the best, but it is right up there with the first Avengers. It is a great movie that I thoroughly enjoyed. So that's my ranking of all six comic book movies of 2016. What's your ranking? Tell me in the comment section. I would love to have a great lively discussion all about it because I don't want to just talk about comic book movies. I want to talk about comic book movies with you. If you're new to my channel and you've never clicked that subscribe button, please consider clicking that subscribe button if you like the sound of my voice and you think I've got some good thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. If you're wondering why throughout this video that I've been getting more and more out of breath and sweaty throughout the whole thing, it's actually because I've been exercising uh, right there. There's my camera and right behind it is my bench press. And uh, yeah, I'm actually very tired right now. I'm probably about to pass out. But thank you for watching anyway.